Brandon, you got a copy. Dewey, we're over here on the south side, and I've got a group of about 50 head of sheep over here. I didn't know if you wanted to come over here and classify some of these guys for the capture. Yeah, 10-4, that's probably not a bad idea. I'll head that way shortly. Okay, that's fine. I, I got another one, I think, up here. Right down here to the right, 5 o'clock. The mountain ranges out here, the views, the vistas, all that, they're great. But they're nothing if you don't have wildlife in them. kind of have to take a deep breath. Uh, they were here way before we were. Back in the late 1800s, there was a healthy population of desert bighorn sheep across West Texas. They started to decline in the 1900s. Then they attribute that to the introduction of sheep, goats, the diseases that they carry, all this country getting fenced up and unregulated hunting. By the 1960s, all the native bighorn were gone. A group of wildlife enthusiasts, of people that love sheep and want to do good things for sheep and, and all things wild, that got together and, and said, let's do something about this. Wanting to repopulate West Texas with the desert bighorn, Texas Parks and Wildlife began capturing sheep from other states and moving them to the land they once roamed. Back in the early days, it was pretty rustic, I, I would say. And then we'd just, we'd wrestle with them a good bit, and it, it'd get kind of western now and then. We took three summers to catch uh, 13 prime sheep. And there were sheep brought in from Arizona, from Utah, lots of them from Nevada, even from Baja California, Mexico. The sheep are coming back uh, to Texas, and currently there's about 1,500 animals. That was a real red letter day when we suddenly saw a young lamb nursing a, a ewe on top of one of those hills. That was really the beginning of the restoration program, and, and it didn't end there. Right now, we've got a capture on uh, Elephant Mountain, trying to remove 80 animals off an elephant and uh, translocate them down to a black gap. The population there hasn't really blossomed like it has at, at Elephant. Yes, sir.
So now they'll collect all the tissue samples, blood, fecal, hair, skin biopsy, uh, nasal swab, tonsil swab, checking for pathogens. We try and learn as much as we can while we have them here, You're always keeping the animal safety in, in, in mind, animal welfare in mind. The last thing we want to do is take unhealthy animals to a healthy, healthy population. And we'll also radio collar the animals, and we'll keep track of movements, mortalities, habitat use. The sheep are going to Black Gap, borders right up against the U.S.-Mexican border, and so a lot of these animals will likely go into Mexico, and so that's going to allow us to identify those very important travel corridors. And this guy ought to be on the landscape for eight plus years down at Black Gap, so. He's got a long life ahead of him. Okay, it's because of man that you know that these animals went went extinct here in Texas. So I think it's collectively, you know, our, our duty to make sure that they that they're here for one and they persist here for future generations. Black Gap Wildlife Management Area is part of a three million acre protected area along the U.S.-Mexico border. The canyons along the Rio Grande here are over a thousand feet high and some of the most beautiful and wild landscapes in the world. These bighorns are icons of that wildness. been asked what is success you know, when will the will the restoration be done and in my opinion it's, it's never done there's still other places within the country or even you know out of the country that that require that that's how we started and once we get to that point it'll be our obligation to give back <laughs>